Hey, good people. We are back with our part two of the how to apply the clasp to your waist bead. So I want to give you guys a chance to really get a close up on some of the materials that I'm using. The elastics, I have them from about smallest to largest. You have the 0.5 millimeter, 0.7 millimeters, and then you have the one millimeter. And that's the thickness of the elastic. So I'll play with a few different clasps today. And so look at the barrel. And at the end of this video, hang tight because I'll give you a full description of each barrel and each bead that we're applying to your waist bead strand. So today we're going to use elastic. We're also going to use the GS Hypo Cement, which helps to kind of bond the bead to the elastic on the end. And my go-to has always been the Gorilla Super Glue, so that's always an option as well. So grab your elastic. Um, in this case, I'll use two. I'm going to use your 0.7 millimeters and also your one millimeter. That's the thickness. Um, I often use the 0.5 um, depending on the class, depending on the design, or if I'm going to use my bead spinner. So let's get started. In this case, we'll go ahead and start with the barrel clasp. And again, at the end of this video, I'll show you a description on each and every class that we're using. So here we'll start with the neck and we're going to put the elastic inside of the neck of the barrel clasp, but it's going to be on the opposite side of the high neck. Please do remember that when you're applying these, you wanna make sure that they're um, the opposite end because if you manage to put on the same clasp on your waist bead, it will not connect. There's no connectivity there and you've wasted a bunch of time there. So get the elastic all the way through the hole. And because I'm using one of the kind of smaller, thinner clasp, I'm going to add a crimps to it. So look for a crimps and a crimps is simply um, kind of a secret tool that I use to make sure that my elastic hangs on to my string. In this case, I think there's about point, uh, 2.3 millimeters, but again, I'll add a description on that. And what I'm doing here is using the little crimps to uh, kind of bond my elastic. Sometimes people say I have a hard time. Um, once I get a knot, my knot doesn't stay. But when you bond it around something very small, it works out very well. So this is a secret tool that I just kind of created myself one day, looking at the crimps, not really having a real use of them, but realizing that they bend very easily. Um, and they also have some sort of strength to it that works very well within the barrel. So what you do is tie a knot around that small crimps, okay? And you see me here, I'm trying to place the elastic through the hole twice, but because my elastic is 0.7, it doesn't go through two times, but that's fine. Um, in this case, for your 0.5 millimeter elastic, you'll definitely be able to send the elastic through the small crimps hole twice and do a few knots around it. I'd say three knots is more than enough around your little crimps that we're using. So the purpose for this, remember we put the elastic through the barrel, now we put the crimp through there and it's on its own, but the goal is to use that to send it through your barrel. So now I'm bringing the barrel back up and that barrel will, the neck of it, that little crimp piece will now go through the barrel neck. And that's why I say not too many knots because if you tie too many, it will not work. Also, if your barrel hole is too small and this crimp uh, piece is too small, um, it will not go in. But in this case, it's a perfect fit. This bead spacer is about, I'm sorry, the bead uh, barrel is about nine by four millimeters and it fits perfectly here. So what you wanna do is go ahead and send it through the hole and you wanna pull on the other end. If you can see there, the crimp actually went right through the hole, including the knots that I put through the elastic. So you're going to cut off your remainder elastic. But before we do that, I wanna make sure that that crimp is inside of the neck of that barrel. So I'm gonna use a plier and do a quick punch and you actually see it kind of flop right in there, but it never goes to the bottom of the barrel. And it seals itself right in the neck of the barrel, but at the same time, giving you great connectivity to the other end when you're done with your waist bead. 
So I'm gonna cut off the remainder on the tip where you see my crimps there. Let me lower it for you a bit so you can see it. And now you know that it's inside of the neck of my barrel. Now I wanna do one more thing just to secure that. And on the other end of my barrel, I'm going to make a quick knot Take it really slow down to the tip of the barrel if you see that there because now we're working on the other end of the barrel and I want to send it as close as possible to the starting point of my waist bead and this is so I know that I have my crimps on one end it's nice and secure but now I'm gonna put another knot on the other end and pull it right up you want to pull up because if your knot is too low it does not secure the tip of your barrel so you pull it right up if you see there now I have a small knot right at the tip of my barrel so if ever it decides to fall through I have the knot to kind of somewhat secure it there as well and now we're gonna go ahead and pull a spacer bead we those come in a few sizes I'll show you a description of what I use it's either a two millimeter hole uh, which is a four millimeter bead or I'll have a, a 1.5 millimeter hole, also four millimeter bead. And it's the very first bead that I place onto my elastic before I get started on the waist bead. This serves as security. It also serves as a great professional, nice finish touch. It's the beginning of my waist bead and it covers that quick little knot that I decided to place there just to secure my clasp as I move forward. So once you have that there, you want to grab some glue. In this case, I'll use a GS Hypo Cement. And you put a little dab right in between your spacer bead and right onto your knot and right in between your barrel. So in this case, I won't apply it just for a clean sake, but you'll lift your spacer. You'll place it right on the knot, just a dab and close it up. So now your spacer is now bonded with your knot and our Gorilla Glue and your barrel clasp and you are ready to get started so this is the very beginning steps of actually applying your clasp onto your waist bead strand and this can work on all strands so feel free to ask me any questions we can go in deeper about some of the different strands we use here but in this case for example sake we're using that so now we're going to move forward. I'm going to use our thicker strand. This is the one millimeter strand. I'm also going to use another barrel. It's the barrel screw claps. It's a twist and the connectivity is awesome. As long as you make sure that you apply opposite ends onto your waist bead. I learned that the hard way. Um, and so it's something that anytime I'm applying a clamps, I make sure to check out the ends and make sure they're the opposites. So in this case, we'll get started there. We'll do the same thing. You wanna stick the elastic through the opposite end. Um, I usually start with the neck because you always know that you'll end with a hole. Um, and then you make sure that you have real, everything secure that's going into your neck um, when it comes to applying the clasp here. So we'll start off by making a few knots. For the neck of a barrel, this barrel, again, I'll send a description, um, but this barrel is large enough that I will not need a crimps. The crimps will just kind of take up space because the barrel is large enough that a good three to four knots will seal the deal and it locks right into the neck of the barrel. So in this case, I'll make a few knots, see that? It's nice and thick. And I know that that knot is going into the neck of the barrel. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to pull on that. We're going to track that knot down and send it right in. And this is where you're gonna do your mighty tug. Put some muscle into it and notice that it slips right in. So now, Oh, maybe not right in, but okay, now it's in there. And maybe a few tugs because the elastic seems to be a bit flexible, but when you show it who's in charge, it goes right into place. So you place it right into the barrel neck. Notice that it's right in there. The only thing we see there is maybe just obviously the remainder elastic, and we'll go ahead and clip that right off. And once you have that off, take a look again at the barrel. You notice your elastic is stuck right in there with or without a crimps. And the crimps is just my little secret weapon that keeps people from calling me back because um, I give a 90 day guarantee. And the last thing I want to do is hear from a client about 
having any problem with their clamps. So on the other end, the same as we did before, we're gonna put a little knot at the very tip. And again, this is just for a secure purpose. Um, I haven't seen anyone necessarily do this, but this is something that works for me, that prevents the callbacks, that um, makes sure that when you have your waist beat, it's something that you can wear for years. So in this case, see that knot nice and clean. Um, if you'd like, you can make a second knot because depending on your, um, your bead spacer, some of them are large, let's say four millimeters, and the holes are actually two millimeters, and it gives you enough space to put a nice knot in between, and that's to hide your knot. So in this case, I'm gonna use one of the larger spacer beads and place it right on, and I'm doing that because, you know, my elastic is thicker, perhaps I'm doing a, a heavier design where I'm using different stones or gemstones or, different charms so I want to use my thicker strand and you slide it right on and that covers your initial knot and if you see how clean that is you have your barrel and then you have your spacer right in between and of course what you want to do towards the end is uh, make sure you secure it in this case you'll go back through it put a tip between your bead spacer put it right onto your knot slide it right on and then let it dry. I wouldn't get started with the bead job right, I would say a good seven minutes is safe. I usually let it hang for a bit. When you get back to it, it's nice and secure, right? Make sure it's dry before you get started just so it doesn't stick to anything else that you have around and you're all set. So we have literally completed the beginning of two waist beads using our bead spacers they come in gold and silver they're metal we have the copper barrel screw claps that we were able to use of course we have some glues that uh, not many people use but it secures and really holds your waist beads together and of course your Heidi and Joe crimps and so again I'll send you a little bit more information towards the end of this video on each and every product you see here but go out and uh, get beating guys um, of course lastly your one millimeter up there goes my elastic and if you're a beater things just kind of flop everywhere so just kind of let it go and then of course it doesn't want to go but your pliers this comes in handy um, at all times just to put everything where it needs to go and your handy dandy pair of scissors you need them at all times and voila here we have your applying your clasp to your waist beads all done you guys subscribe leave your comments let me know what you think obviously i am not uh the let's say expert in this but i've made over a thousand waist beads to know that this thing works people love it and customer service is key so follow us on bliss waist ice beads bead and drip we have our virtual waist beading parties where i actually teach you how to apply these things step by step with a group of your girls but whatever you like we're here for you just follow us and keep in touch back to the details as promised here are a few items that i use today here are the barrels. You can find all of these on Amazon. So shop, shop, shop. And again, comment. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day.